This is the target map we're looking at in the studio application. You see we are looking at the workshop demo target map up here. What we have here is the project explorer that shows a tree view of all the items that we're working on in this target map. Of course, the business objects, that's kind of the main thing. So here we have the account and the card and the customer that we actually saw in the tracker just before. And if we expand the account, these are the objects in the target system that we are delivering data to for the account. We saw them in the XML document before, the account, the account ACC ID relation, the ACC IP relations, that are the structures that we saw before in the XML. And then it has a list of children, the statement, the interest, and all that. And of course, if we expand them, they also can deliver uh, to the target system and they can also have children. So, so this is where you build this hierarchy. It can be as wide and as deep as you want it to be. There are no limits here. And, and in some instances, they get very, very wide and very, very, very deep. And, and, and the system just handles that. If I want to create a new business object, I'll do it here. <clears throat> I'll not do it because I want to keep this valid so we can, can move on from it. If I open the account, whatever I open, opens in a work area over here as a tab, so you can have multiple things open at the same time. And this one is checked in, so we're communicating through the common repository. So if I want to modify it, I need to check it out. Do that, checking out the account. That means now it opens up, I can modify it and nobody else can modify it. So we have kind of pessimistic uh, concurrency here because our users are not necessarily proficient in, in merging conflicts and all this that you get if you have optimistic concurrency. So it's kind of, when you want to modify something, you have to lock it. And while you have it locked, nobody else can modify it. So it's only one at a time. And what we have here on the account, on this tab, is the list of interface fields. So this is where I define the target interface for this account. These are the data that I need to receive for the account. And this is, you just add them on here uh, as many as you want. On the children tab, this is where I add the children that we see down here. You can see we have a cardinality on them as well, so we also validate that you, you observe and adhere to this cardinality. <coughs> and then on the target tab, this is where you then start to deliver data to the target system. So, so this list corresponds to this list over here in the tree view. And where do they come from? They all come up here from the metadata. So this is where you import the metadata from your target system. So I'll open this one. Here we have all the structures up here and for each structure we have all the fields down here. So if I just select and you can see the field list is changing down below. So these are the metadata that describes what we need to produce to the target system. This is something you can import into the studio. And, and we deliver an extension here that can import it from a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, there are other extensions that we have that can, you can give a SQL statement and can go into a SQL database in the system catalogs and pull out the definitions of the tables. And it's also a very simple thing to actually write another provider that will plug into the studio, then you can have your complete bespoke uh, import method to get the metadata into the, into the target map. <clears throat> so all this stuff is definitely not something you have to sit and type by hand. You can import it into the target map. So these are the metadata and these are the fields with their names and the data types. So if I want to deliver to yet another. On the account business object, I have to say, okay, I want to deliver more data. So I have to choose which one over here. You can have more than one set of metadata. I have to choose which one. And once I've chosen, I just choose one of the tables or one of the, the entities in the target metadata that I also want to produce data for, for the account. Again, I'm not gonna do it here because that will give me a lot of work that we don't have to do right now. But I'll just open one of them, 
Let's take a more interesting one. Let's go down on the statement. We've got this ACC statement receiver. So if you look at the data, target metadata, it's this one, right? With these fields. So if we look at the target object, open it. The fields from the metadata, they appear here automatically. <clears throat> and then the target map is going to ask you the question for each field. How are you going to assign a value to this field? How are you going to assign a value to this field? So this is where you actually map data. And let me check this one out. Now you have a set of different value types that you can choose from. Uh, this one is called interface. It's chosen from the list. And that just means I am going to my business object. Remember this target object is hanging on to the statement business object here. And that means I am going to the statement business object and I'm picking up the value of an interface field called statement type and just take that value and assign it to this field that will go into the target system. If I open the statement, you can see it's here. It's a statement type. It's just added as an interface field for the statement business object. Going back, <clears throat> There's another value type here that's called target. That means instead of picking up a value from the interface, you pick a value on another target object that's already been calculated. And in this case, we are on statement under account. So here we are going up on the account business object and we are picking up a value on, the, on this target object called target account, this one. And we're picking up a value that's already been calculated once up there, and we don't have to do it again. We'll just pick up the same value here. And of course, this is something that you use all the time because in the target map, we are working in a hierarchy. But when data are going into uh, the target system, it, it's usually split apart, and all this that we have inherently in the hierarchy has now to be expressed by foreign key relationships when it goes into the target system. So in the hierarchy, the statement, if we open it, it doesn't say anything about bank ID because that's a given because we are, we are hanging under the account. But when we deliver the data to the target system, of course, we have to be able to give a value for the bank, the bank ID for this entity for the target system to work. That touches on a thing that I think is quite normal if you have a more ETL or flow-based approach to a migration. You have this thing about orphans. You have child objects that has flowed across your migration, but their parent is nowhere to be found. That simply never happens. There's absolutely no way you can get a statement across our tool to the target system without its account because it lives inside the account and it is migrated with the account. So it's never coming on its own. So there's no orphans here. <clears throat> Another interesting one here is the relationship. And this, this is the question. This is a bank statement. And this, I know this IP ID, that is the identifier in the target system of the customer that must receive this statement. And of course, this is a value that will be calculated when you migrate the customer. So here we are in the account hierarchy, and we need a value that is calculated when the customers are being migrated. So, so how do we resolve that? What we do is we go back to the business object that we are hanging on, the statement, and we look at the relationships. And here we have the customer, we're linking to the customer here with a relationship. We call it statement receiver. That's just a name. And if I click on this one, then the customer has an ID that is the bank ID and the customer number. So if I want here from the statement on the account to relate and look up this customer, I need to provide a value for each of the keys. And this is what I do here. So I pick a value from my interface, that's the bank ID on the account, and then I pick another value here for the customer number, and that is on the statement business object, I pick up the customer number interface field. And once I've linked these two together, I am free to use values from the customer here where I'm mapping right now. <clears throat> Down here, 
we get the first notion of flags and events. Of course, when you're standing here and you want to look up a customer, there's two possibilities. Either you find the customer or you do not. And in this case, if we do not find the customer that needs to receive the statement, that is a problem. And then we fire a user event that will pop up in the tracker so you can see it. And it will also have the consequence reject root. And that means that the entire account will now be rejected and not go any further because there's no sense to migrate the account when you have this error on its statement. The event is called I0011. If I click on it here, we can see that the, the event has a placeholder here. So for each placeholder, the event also wants a parameter so it knows what data actually to merge into this event text when it shows it up in the tracker. So here we have defined an interface to get from the statement so we can look up a customer. And that's exactly what we are using when we are mapping on the target right here. So we're using a relationship. And that means we point to the statement and we point to the relationship we have named statement receiver. We want a target value. So now under the customer, let me just close it. Uh, the customer is here. We have a, a target that this is delivered by the customer, and that's the one that we're looking up. You can see we go into that target that was done when the customer migrated, and we pick up a value that was calculated when the customer was migrated, and we use it here. So that's a relationship, very powerful feature. The last one I want to show before we carry on. Is, is that's actually the question that I think you had. How, when, when is the point that you actually can, can, can supplement and make expand whatever is, is mapped and generated here? And that's, that's what's happening in the rules. So here we have a field that we want to send on to the target system. It's called frequency ID, and this is a calculated value. So once it's a calculated value, I need to point to a rule, and that's it's the name thing, it will return something with a data type and it will expect some parameters and it may raise some flags that you might to react to with events just as we saw before on the relationship. This fellow here, the get frequency ID, he lives down here. It's a mapping rule and we got him where we got him there, right? Get frequency ID. He's got a little man on him. And that's because he is a rule that needs to be implemented manually. Let's open it. It's a manual rule. And that means at the end of the day, the implementation of this rule will not be generated by the tool. You need to get a technical guy to implement it for you. But when you're working here in the studio, all you got to do is to define the signature, the interface to this rule, what does it return? Which parameters will it need? Which flags may it raise? And over here, before you're done, you have to provide some kind of, of specification, some kind of description so somebody knows what it is you want this rule to do. So this is just complete free text. You can write whatever you want here. Once you've done this, as a mapper, you can carry on as if this rule is there, right? You can use it in your mapping and somebody, yourself or somebody else at a later stage can then implement this rule for you. In this case, we're just using this rule to calculate the value of the frequency. Now, when we are in the rules, this guy had a little man on him because he was manual. Somebody needs to implement him. If we look at another one up here that has no man, that means it is a lookup rule. And if we look at that one, it's a lookup rule and, and it's a different thing. You don't have to define or specify anything because we will do all that for you. What you have to do is you have to point to a value set, which is just a table of data. This one is pointing to the account products value set. And that is down here, the account products. It's just a table of data. So what, when you define a value set, you just define the columns. What are the columns of this value set? So in this case, we have these six columns. We give them a data type, 
and that's about it. Again here, the value sets can be in diff of different types. We touched on the translation. If you say it's a translation value set, then it will pop up in the tracker web application you are, and you can ask your users to populate it with data. If it is dynamic like this one, it is pointing to a provider that will deliver the data to populate the value set. In this case, we're just using a provider we give you that can read the data from an Excel spreadsheet. But again here, it is very easy to, to create another provider that can go into your target system and pull out some data that you can use to validate stuff in the target map. The last one, static. Well, let's have a look. This, this one, account status is, is static. And that means that the data is just typed here right in, this, in the studio. It's, it's, it's static, right? It, it's just part of the target map. So if we go back to the mapping rule, get account product ID that uh, started all this, we've chosen the value set and we just want to look up a value in this value set. So the columns are down here and we say we want to look up with a bank ID and a product code. And if we find a row, we want the product ID column returned to us. So we look up with the bank ID and the product code and we get the product D back product ID back as a result of a call to this rule. You can also say, what do I want returned if I don't find anything? You can also say, I don't want the value as such. I just want to know, did you find anything or didn't you find anything? And you can use that to branch in your, in your migration. So that was the rules. All this and more. I mean, uh, let's go back. If we see here, there are many more value types. I'm not going to I'm not going to talk any more about them because that's going to take forever. But there, there's a, a wide range of different ways that you can assign values to the data that needs to flow into the target. Once you've done and you think this is working, we will tell you if it's working because you can validate your target map. I'm doing that now. And it passed without any errors. We had three warnings because there was actually three items here that is never used anywhere. So they are redundant and could probably be deleted. But now we have a target map that is consistent. This validation goes out in every nook and cranny of this target map and, and validates that everything is consistent. And if it is consistent, we will be able to use this target map to generate the engine for you. It will compile and it will execute and do exactly what you told it to do through the target map. So for that, we're now going to publish. And that means we can take this target map and publish it now in two different directions. You can publish it to the generator, which I'm going to do in just a moment because we want to generate the code. Or you can publish the interface so you can import it into your source map. Right, as we saw before. In this case, we're publishing it, and here everything is written out to this one file. And this is the link between the mapping and the generator. And this link is remembered, right? So you only have to, to, to write this file at one time, and then it will remember it for this target map. So I'm just going to publish everything. It means I'm going to write it all out into this file. So that's done now. 